Welcome to WordPath, the show about Oklahoma Indian languages and the people who are teaching and preserving them. Tonight marks our 100th production of the WordPath television show, uh, a fact that I'm very proud of, and I'd like to celebrate tonight by looking back on some of the 100 shows that we've done, talking a little bit about what we've accomplished, and also, um, we do hope to accomplish more, by the way. We're not stopping here. I think there'll probably be about 30 or 40 more shows because we haven't covered every language yet and there are other issues I'd still like to discuss on the program. But let me reminisce a little bit from a personal point of view as the producer and tell you a little bit about the history of the Word Path show before we start looking at these excerpts. Actually, I never dreamed that I would be a television producer. It was never a particular aspiration of mine. But um, as I started to work in the field of Indian language preservation, I, it became very obvious to me how wonderful a tool videotape can be. Uh, and I didn't have very good video, I didn't have any video skills. I'd never handled a video camera at all, for instance. Uh, but I heard about the community producers workshop here at Multimedia. And so it was kind of a natural to me to put the two together. I came here and, and took the opening classes and I, I um, served as a crew member on other shows for a while, uh, mostly on a show called Ready, Set, Go, Ready, Set, Go, Perform. Um, <clears throat> I was a camera person and learned some of the other trades as well before I felt I was ready to attempt um, to do a show about Oklahoma Indian languages. So that was about a year of preparation. We've been doing the show now for about three years. Um, and. It, it really is, I, I can't emphasize enough what a wonderful tool video is for language preservation. Um, you can capture things on video about language that you just can't get in a book or even on an audio tape as well in many cases. Um, you can have um, conversation and see the, the you can uh, not only hear the inflection of the voices but see the facial expression of people as they talk to each other. Uh, you can see the performance of a song uh, or the dance that goes with it while you hear the words. Um, you can see instances of language in real life. This to me is the most precious thing because people commonly think about making dictionaries or grammars or taping a song or taping a story, uh, but they don't really often have the tools to show language in real life, which is the real living language. Language is a living thing, as I always like to say. So I think uh, one of the themes of using video for me is what I like to call texts, lives, and videotapes. Um, texts are things like songs and poems and stories. They are chunks of language that may have some formality to them. They may have a beginning and end, and you just would like to document them. But lives, language in lives, is what's really only doable on videotape, I think. Um, so some of the themes throughout these three years of the WordPath show are purposes of the show and themes of programs that we put on, sort of the same thing. A big part of it is that I'd like to help the public to understand the importance of Indian languages to Indian people and to the culture of our state as a whole. I mean, it's, it's part of what Oklahoma is. Um, I'd like to help the public to understand this. I'd like to also save some of these things on videotape where, for instance, a, a singer or a storyteller may not have the resources to, do, to videotape their own song or their own story. So in the process of making a show, we can give them a tape that, that documents that song or that story for them. So that's a second purpose, kind of an archiving purpose, you might say. Um, I'd also, I've also enjoyed letting teachers see each other's work. Um, several of our shows have had to do with language classes, and so we tape a te teacher in action using the language in the classroom, and other teachers can benefit from seeing their methods and so forth. And finally, um, I've always thought it was a great idea just to show some of the heroes of language preservation, the people who work so hard in these endeavors, and give them a few moments of fame and of public support, so to speak. So I've chosen about 50-some excerpts, I think, to show. I don't know if we'll have time to get them all in. They're just brief looks. I hope they'll help you if you've been watching the show, kind of to remind you uh, how good some of the shows were and uh, how fascinating and beautiful um, the guests were and their art as well. In many cases, there was art involved. I've kind of got this uh, arranged in sections. The first section has to do with programs where we discussed issues and policies relating to Indian languages. Let's take a look. First, Geraldine the, pre the President of the United States, President Grant, declared Indian children be required to attend school and their barbarous dialect be blotted out and the English language substituted. 
As the result of these past policies of reprimanding Chicksaw students for speaking their own language in schools funded by the government, the younger generation is incapable of speaking their mother tongue. Right up to the present day, though, borrowing is partly a matter of taste. Some people, for reasons of ethnic and linguistic pride, prefer to avoid borrowing altogether. Others are comfortable with borrowing words from other languages. But with the present situation of so many Oklahoma Indian languages being on the verge of extinction, some people feel especially strongly that they want to keep what's left of their language as free as possible of outside influence, so as to preserve the most authentic aspects of their language for the coming generations. In recent weeks, I've been talking to some of the people who went to boarding schools, um, and I've been visiting boarding schools and reading and doing other research, and I found out there's a little bit more to the picture than that, that boarding schools were not entirely an evil thing, although, in fact, the washing out of mouths with soap did happen, especially in the early days. I'd like to show you some excerpts of what I learned this week. The earliest education in Oklahoma was provided by Indian schools. The map is dotted with the sites of schools built in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Some were run by missionaries, some by the United States government, and some by a partnership of the two. Indian students were taught English and the three R's. There was also an emphasis on farming, domestic arts, and trades. But we do have some uh, important events that we want to keep uh, than to tell our children, but they made songs out of them. Yeah, they made songs. So that's part of what's in uh, that song. That's our, uh, you know, well, to, them songs tell our history. So that's how you keep, your, keep track of your history. Yeah, our well, history. Now, Phil, let's have you react a little to this. If those yeah. songs are lost because people of many tribes are singing together, they can't all sing Ponca, they don't sing those words, isn't that history loss? Isn't that a, a loss? Indian people. Well, no, because I think what we're, we're confusing here is that the powwows were intertribal. And I remember reading someplace, uh, the powwows actually started after World War II, and it was a way of welcoming the veterans back from the war, mm -hmm. and everybody was invited. But I'm, I'm certainly not suggesting that the Ponca sh still shouldn't have their ceremonies, their dances just specifically for their own people, just as my own tribe has long lodge ceremonies, green corn ceremonies. We do things ourselves just for our own people, but then we also attend powwows where everybody comes to it. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think it's important that we not get confused, that we're not losing not our identity or. as an individual tribe, mm -hmm. but we need to establish an identity as a whole people too, mm -hmm. for that. Could you tell us how you would greet someone in the Yuchi language? Uh, well, I could, but uh, I won't. I, I choose not to. Um, I reserve that right, as a speaker of the native language, to address only uh, my fellow tribes person. Mm. And uh, I think to, uh, I have nothing against that with anybody else of my tribal background who wished to uh, to um, offer that to a non-native person. But my own personal philosophy is that um, to uh, it goes back to the idea of like when I when I was growing up, and um, uh, non a lot of the non-native kids would ask me, uh, "Are you Indian?" I said, "Well, yes." And they said, "Well, say something Indian to us." You know, mm -hmm. there were times when I would comply. Mm -hmm. And uh, it got to a point where uh, I would be saying something uh, almost uh, an insult to them in, in my language because uh, that to them it was just a sound as opposed right. to, the, to its content. And so, um, uh, so, so your game, was, your your language was sort of reduced to a parlor game or yeah, exactly. Like cocktail became, chatter. Yeah, or became trivialized. Kind of and and, uh, and even today, I uh, I only speak my language with uh, my tribal people. Hmm, so Joe Dale wouldn't greet me in Yuchi. <laughs> That's part of the picture of what goes on with Indian languages, uh, attitudes towards language and sharing language. Our next section, our next section is about songs. Uh, one of my favorite sections, uh, or types of program. A lot of our programs included songs, and I enjoyed including the songs for two reasons. One reason is I think the music is beautiful in and of itself. And second of all, um, Songs in Indian languages are very helpful to students who are trying to learn a language. They'll be less shy about singing a song than they will trying to carry on a conversation when they're just beginning to learn the language. They can be very helpful. 
Um, and of course, they're an excellent example of how language and culture go together and are very closely integrated. You can't really have one fully without the other, I think. We'll be hearing songs by Randlett Edmonds, Caddo, Evans Ray Sate Pahoodle, Kiowa, uh, Margaret Malden and her mother uh, in Creek, and then a small Creek choir. Randlett Edmonds. Next, we're going to see uh, some excerpts of shows which featured language class in action. Now, this is the really, in some ways, the heart of language preservation. Uh, people say, well, you have to have the language in the home if you want children to learn it, but most children don't have parents that can teach them. So lang the language classroom has become very important in language preservation. We'll see excerpts from several classes that have been on the WordPath show. This is in Choctaw. Inka at Ayam Lily Achi. Inka at Aka Inka Achi. Inka at Ayam Lily Achi. First off, how, how do we say these two sentences? One more time. How about the other one? So we have Then the next one, the other sentence, we have What's the difference? Which one? First one is saying the, the boy is hitting the ball like in the baseball game. You know, he's the one doing the hitting. And the second one, what are we saying? The ball is hitting the ball. ball how would that happen? What it happens? Because after batting, the pitcher hit it, throw it, or he got hit. And actually, that's what's yeah. 
All right. There is so much going on with language classes in this state. In addition to going to classes in that kind of a show, we had several programs where uh, either I or some other linguist came to the studio and gave a mini lesson or a, a little talk on the structure of a certain language. I'd like to show you three samples of that type of show. The word for man is Comanche is Tenop. And suppose you wanted to talk about those men over there, and there happened to be exactly two of them. You wouldn't, you know, in English, actually it's irregular in English, we go from man to men, depending on whether it's one or more than one. In Comanche, you can have tenapa if it's one. Tenavuk. Whispered vowel on the end. And all of this is a suffix meaning dual. That means two men. It doesn't have the number two in it, you could say. Uh, wahat, and you could say wahat to tenavok, but that would be kind of redundant. You just say tenavok, and that means a couple of guys. Or in the plural, which means three or more, uh, men from anywhere from three on up, it would be te na ne with a long barred u on the end, and that suffix is the one that's usually used for plural. Easy to find in any language. So we can match up, let's see, dog, perro, ofe, squirrel, Ardilla, funny, and the word for C, V, pisa. So let's take a look right now. First of all, we have the subject, verb, object, subject, verb, object in Spanish, but in Choctaw, we have the subject, object, and the verb. And this is a pattern that is very, very strong in Choctaw. The verb comes at the end. Uh, well, English has b, d, and g, and it has p, t, and k. We don't write the little h there, but actually in English you have a puff of air. Uh, Panka has both of those, and then it has another series. We call these stops, um, and it has a, a p, d, and g, 
and that's similar to sp what Spanish has. Um, so, for instance, Spanish has these two series of stops, English has these two, but Panka has four series of stops. So, the last um, series is um, is a p a and a t a, so it has a little popping sound. Now, another of my favorite types of shows uh, featured stories in Indian languages. Let me tell you in advance who you're going to be hearing so I don't have to interrupt uh, the beginning of each story. We'll hear Linda Alexander telling a story in Creek, Lucille McClung in Comanche, Gus Palmer Jr. in Kiowa, Betty Smith reminiscing in Cherokee, and then Michael Stewart showing some cartoons in Choctaw. Uh, Pomofiat was Shkubitok, which translates to uh, our dog had mange. <laughs> <laughs> An interesting story topic. <laughs> Well, <laughs> true to life, though, right? It does if happen. you grew up in the country, you right. would understand that. Right. <laughs> and as we go on, is that Ilapat Pimofi Ikbi Shuatuk, which basically said it, this made our dog stink very bad. <laughs> <laughs> then, this is something our grandfather always had us do. Pimofiat Ofi Moto Oil Ayopi Imat Achituk, and it translates to saying our grandfather told us to dip the dog or give him a bath in motor oil. One of the things that I think videotape is best for is capturing the real sound of a real language used in conversation between two people. Let's listen to a little bit of Ponca conversation we saw on WordPath. Jean, we come like a dog and dog that they down by his cadwat, a de ombahata, a de jui de combla, a but they are teeth and non the work is not going to Remember our all Choctaw language drama that we had on one of the shows? Alonsiat in Hochifo Iksho, the baby has no name. Not 
надо Паласка Паласка Алваша Finally, from time to time, we've featured events. In the next section, we'll see Seminole Nation Days, the Preston Language Conference, and Intertribal Word Path Society's celebration of Oklahoma Indian language and culture. <laughs> Moment my net over no made, make or open eye wheel is market, for she's gonna have a way a little wheel. The language here is Miami. They said that the warriors cried on this day that they named Sunni Khoje Grimms. thank our faithful WordPath crew who have helped us through the years. Of course, tonight's crew of Chris Kane, uh, Jean Dubois, and Hiroko Inahama, but also all the people that have worked for the show off and on during the last three years. We're going to show you their names in a list. I can't thank them enough. These people work for nothing diligently, just for the love of the program, and we couldn't do it without them. I'd also like to thank others who've made their services and facilities and money available to WordPath. Um, Albert Nakwadi, who sings the closing music. Ketcha Shauna, who does the opening music. Uh, Multimedia Studios, of course. Intertribal WordPath Society. And we have gotten uh, support for programs featured on our program from Oklahoma Humanities Council and the Endangered Language Fund. I'd also like to thank Ronnie Price, who made the gourd that we have on the table here and an unnamed Caddo a uh, drumstick maker who made the other prop on this table. Um, thanks also to the Intertribal Word Path Society, who's given me release time to work on the show. And look for a reception and party coming up soon for all of our Word Path guests and crew to date. See you next time on Word Path. <laughs> Wapin name, I don't want to get the. Now, Henry, yo, Henry, now, Henry, yo, Henry, I'm not going to get the. Wapin name, I don't want to get the.